All right, so this is a continuation of um, the last video that I made, uh, part one of this uh, problem solved correctly. So um, I said I was gonna come back and s show you how to not to so how to not solve this problem because the NCES has a way of throwing answers into the multiple choice um, answers. Uh, and as soon as you see it, you solve the problem and you think you, you got the right answer when it's not the case at all. So just because you see an answer in there and you got that answer doesn't mean that that's the correct answer. So you always have to check yourself and that's what I wanted to show you over here. So make sure you watch uh, part one of this video. I think it was titled um, Fault Load, um, Fault Current Load and voltage source part one solved correctly so just make sure you watch that one first because that'll show you how to actually solve the problem and the right answer was 9.9 was, um, so this is the right answer over here solved correctly so we went through the process and finding uh, your fault current and um, uh, computing it and uh, finding uh, the impedance your resistance uh, the load so 9.9 .9 was our answer and that's the correct answer however if I don't go any further than that remember the question is what should be the value of RL that needs to be added to the load so let's say I already solved for fault current being equal to 500 amps and I got 3.2 right I already have a 10 a 10 ohm which was already given to me so if I add, if I'm not paying attention and I do 10 plus 3.2, that's a 13.2. And if you notice, that's part of our answer over here. So now I'm in the exam, I got 13.2, I look at C and that's 13.2 and I'm thinking in my head I got the right answer. So really, really be careful of how you actually solve the problem because that's what matters the answer it does matter of course because you know that's how you're going to be graded at but if you solve the problem incorrectly there is going to be an answer in the multiple choice that's going to be there and so you have to always be really really careful on how you actually came up with the answer that has to be correct first so we have one down there which is 13.2 and that's absolutely incorrect and going further let's say okay I understand that the question is not asking me for you know the impedance over here in series but I figure out that it was actually the load um, resistance I'm doing my math I'm doing my math you know um, and then I got here but instead of instead of um, calculating R z squared minus x squared I just go ahead and put 16.5 minus instead of computing this to be uh, this total over here I just replace the x with 3.2 let's see what it gives us 3.2 squared so this if I take the square root of this This is actually 16.5 squared minus 3.2 squared. Take the square root of that. That gives me 16.1. Right? Again, I'm not paying attention. I'm just, you know, rushing and not knowing. Oh, oh, sorry. So this is 16.1, period. So let's scroll up here to look at the answers again 16.1 there you go there's an answer here with 16.1 and that's absolutely the correct the incorrect answer so again I solved the problem incorrectly and I have an answer so that's really the point of the video um, just wanted to show you uh, the tricks uh, that NCES will throw at you sometimes um, so uh, plug and play doesn't necessarily work sometimes um, 
but um, just be really, really careful on how you're solving the problem, how you came up with the answers. It's far more important, well, it's equally as important as actually finding the answer, because you can guess, you know, I can just guess, whatever, and still get the wrong answer, but if I solve the problem incorrectly, there's going to be an answer in the multiple choice, but that doesn't mean that I got the correct correct answer. So that's kind of the point that I wanted to make in this video, um, just to show you. So let me know if you have any questions um, on that. Thank you.